My name is Tad Dazarn, and I play the half-man, half-dog creature Pongo here at the Baxter Avenue Morgue. Uh, I really don't know where to begin on this, other than the beginning, but because uh, it's a very touchy subject to talk about whenever I'm here, because it's like whenever I mention the Kremlin, that's when things tend to go haywire around here. Uh, it all started about two years ago when things kind of felt weird, but it didn't escalate up until last year. Last year in this room, there was a group of about 50 people. I came in, did my bit, scared nearly half the people out of the room. I felt good about that. And then I made the comment that I run this place. I go back to my room, which is a big crate room where I stand on a big crate, just stand like a mannequin, put my head in the ceiling, just wait for people to come down, and then I drop. This, this is basically the spot that I stand in, and there's no possible way that anybody could fit in this little space. It's just, it kind of, I, I second guess myself putting my head up here. Well, go back in my room, jump up on my box, put my head in the ceiling, and like, this close to me was a face. I freak out, I jump off the box, walk around, try to get my head straight, I'm like, all right, it's just my imagination, I'm cool. But later on that night, I go to a room, feel real uneasy. Come back, go to my room, it would be cold. Go to any other room, room temperature, sweaty, whatever, but my room always stayed cold. Well, later on that night, <clears throat> I'm going down one of the dark hallways, and I get the feeling like I'm being followed. So, naturally go back to my room, and then that's when everything started happening. <sighs> well, next night, go to the LPI tent, and they have a slideshow of things that they had caught. Well, in one of the pictures, they had caught the face that was in the ceiling staring back at me. And it's a rule here, like at any other haunted house, you don't break character. And I was in full costume. And the fact that they caught that just like I said, it's an uneasy feeling because it get goosebumps right now talking about light. But uh, anyway, later on that night, the LBI asked me to do an investigation with them. I was like, all right, that's cool, I'll do it. So me being the uh, how can I put this nicely? Me being the instigator that I am. <laughs> uh, we were in the great graveyard room, I do believe. I was in there yelling, asking at the show itself. Nothing would happen. So then I, I brought it up new well and started saying a few choice words. I went to turn from one of the hallways and it felt like someone rushed up behind me. And three seconds later, there was an icy chill and then my back just started to like burn, kind of like a I wouldn't necessarily say rug burn, but it was like I had scooted across something, but there was nothing for me to brush up against. Like, there was a hallway, I'm standing in the middle of the room, and there was no way that I could like scrape up against anything. And I swear someone's standing right there. But no, sorry, like. I feel like I'm being watched right now and I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it at all. Sorry. Uh, but like ever since that night, it's like, I guess you could say we have like a, like a s symbiotic bond. That, I mean, that's how I feel. It's like, I'm here. It feeds off me because I'm one of the most intense characters here. 
and it's like it's taking what I give out to manifest itself throughout the whole building. And there are some nights when people they think they see like a figure down the hall or they'll say that they see me when I'm outside in line. They'll see me in different rooms of the house. Like there was an incident that happened last year. I was out in the line chasing people. I chased you about the parking lot. I go back in my room and two of the actors asked me how I got back here so quick. I had no idea what they were talking about. They swore up and down that in the cages, the lights were dim, it's natural that they dim. They swore that I was standing in one of the cages, the lights went dim and I was gone. And then not a minute later, I popped through the access door. And that's... It's weird. But it... I can't do this right now because like... I don't know, like, I know no one's there, but it's like, you know the feeling that you get when... I don't like it. Crash? It... So it was weird, because it felt like someone ran up behind me and basically just ran their hand down my back. But, uh, no, it seriously felt like someone ran past me scratched me and just left it at that. The, the, it scared me because there was nobody around and it just, you know, I, at first I looked around and I was like, oh, whoa, hold on. There's no one here. And it, long story short, I've learned my lesson. I know not to go somewhere I that Sorry, but like I said, I've learned my lesson. I know now not to go somewhere that's haunted and say a bunch of garbage to whatever's there. I know not to call something out that I have no control over. And I mean, I've, I've been to Waverly. I've been all over Louisville to every haunted place that they've had, but nothing, nothing compares to some of the stuff that's happened in this building. It's it's an experience in itself. And if you don't believe me, I dare you to come here and ask for the group. I dare you. Because you will walk out of here with a whole new outlook and you will just... You'll feel like me right now. I'm weirded out just sitting in this room. 